you're going to a meeting, on your way to the meeting, say hi to everybody, recognize them by name. Or do you just put your head down and get on the elevator, get up there as fast as possible? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Just inserting little things throughout the day through each one of the things that you wrote on your sheet. Um, just something to think about. Oh, okay, the argument, the caveats to the, using the coaching style. Um, you may choose the wrong sport to, to do your model. I put the picture of golf up there because if you play a lot of golf and you think that you're going to model your team atmosphere on like a sport like golf, you're not. It's an individual sport. Um, so obviously, choosing the wrong sport is a bad idea. Um, you can't confuse, co confuse coaching with managing. Managing is its own um, task that you have to do, and it's different than coaching. It really is. So my advice is to think of those things as two different things. Yeah, you are a manager. Um, you should also be a coach. You don't have to necessarily be a coach manager, okay? So you can separate those things. And you have to build bridges, not boundaries. That's really important with the competitive nature of, uh, of sports theme coaching uh, in your organization. Um, if you start acting like a coach and you treat your nurses like team members, um, that's a divide. If you're all as team members, then you're all cohesive um, and maybe it's all good. On the other hand, one of the future slides says maybe cohesion is or isn't a good thing. Maybe you need, do need some separation. But that's for your yourself to decide. Um, and don't assume that winning is the only thing. Um, if you are a sports team and you only focus on winning, then you probably aren't lifting weights, doing push-ups, and running wind sprints if you're only focusing on game day or forgetting about practice. So just remembering that winning is not the only thing. Practice, preparation, communication, all those things are important too. So these are some problems with uh, if you go too much into the sports theme uh, thing. So some things to look out for. <clears throat> okay, from research, there are co contradictory findings on whether group cohesion is beneficial or potentially detrimental to team performance. Again, something I just mentioned, we're all on the same team, we're all in the same boat, maybe you lose that competition aspect. Cohesion, sometimes good, sometimes bad. The quote, those who grind jointly with Cleves enjoy his energy and charisma that he consistently brings to the craft. These attributes are what make him a valuable asset to the program, and it's just what the company was searching for when he was hired. I highlighted what I thought was important in that quote, half of it, but still I thought it was important. The handout, I'm not going to have you write on it or anything, but it's this one, it's the introspective, retrospective resume. I just wanted to look at it for a, a moment and think about why you were hired and what was on your resume and why they brought you to the team. You may have thought it was because you have an MBA from Cornell or something like that, or because you previously ran a very successful smaller business and now you're ready for the big time. Um, but you may have forgotten that at least in the interview you had to come with energy, charisma, um, you might have even said I'm a team player, um, and you became an added valuable asset to that program. So thinking about what makes you a valuable asset is a lot more than just the degree that you have. It's also your personality, and it's that leadership that you bring to the team. Looking on that sheet, um, which of those do you then transfer to the teammates in your environment? Yeah, you're energetic. Yeah, you're charismatic. Yeah, you're a team player, and you bring value to the organization. But if you just do that yourself, individually, nobody's going to benefit. You're going to bring what you bring. But, like I said before, if you infect others with that charisma, um, maybe a new hire, for example, that's going to then result in exponential, 
exponential benefit down the road. If you just keep it inside, I know it's kind of corny to think about, but if you just bottle all of that energy up and all that value, um, it's not going to expand. It's not going to duplicate. All right, so research says that for a compelling vision, you need to bring significant purpose or you have significant purpose in your business. You need to have a picture of the future success. You need to have clear values, um, and that guides your daily behavior. This is all stuff we've heard before. So I want you to pull out this handout, colored squares. And just take a real quick moment to uh, write at the top, what do you bring to the table? Remember, I'm thinking about the intangibles. What do you bring to the table? Then after that, what can you learn from others? Sort of what they bring to the table that you could then share. We talked about um, sending an email during your morning emails. Uh, some of the other ideas of how to bring purpose, values, and vision to the team are, I thought it's possible late, late at night, not too late, not after two or three glasses of wine, but just a little bit beforehand. Um, you could actually call maybe your admin support staff after you know they've gone home. You might know their numbers, so you go home and you call them when you know they're not there, and you just leave a voicemail for them for when they get to work in the morning. Just say, hey, how you doing? Um, I was just thinking, of course you got to have this prepared, but I was just thinking about X, Y, Z that we can knock out tomorrow, and I was just uh, thinking about how uh, I'm pretty sure that you can handle that, and I have a lot of faith in you, and I'm looking forward to going forward. You know, you put that realistically in the, you know, what applies to your business um, and your relationship, but leave that voicemail for them to come in of the morning and get. You can do an all-staff email. I know one of the things I get a kick out of the most is when our CEO sends out all-staff emails. And they're not the standard business practice emails that, oh, we're having a meeting on Friday. But he just sends out an email like, uh, hey, did everybody get the, uh, the golf outing flyer? I'm really looking forward to that. It's in July. Um, we already have a golf foursome. And, I'm hoping to uh, score better than John this summer because I heard he was awesome at golf. You know, that's me, John. Um, that's not really his email. But something like that goes out and it just shows like, yeah, this is a real guy and he cares about the golf outing and he's taking the time to send out an all staff email. And that, to me, that's very cool because otherwise all the emails you send out are going to be for just another staff meeting and people get tired of that. After you can recognize an employee on the, on the local news. Um, do this through your marketing or PR department. You just call them up and you, it's a real easy story to, to pitch, especially with hospice. You just call them up and you say, so and so goes out to this patient's house. It's a very special relationship. The family's benefiting a lot. They'll put you on the news. It's pretty much a guarantee. Um, when you put a staff member on the news for something that they regularly do as part of their job and not some like, sort of cheesy extra news flashy story that you want to get PR out, out of, that brings a lot of value to what they do. Because it's not just the news coming to do a story on your hospice house that they have no control over and you put in a new garden that they're never going to get to walk to through because they're so busy, but you get a news story to do, um, you get the news to do a story on what they actually do in their day to day, that brings so much value to uh, their thought process on what they actually do uh, tangibly throughout the day. And you could also go into the field with a nurse or an aide or something like that. And uh, if we had sort of audio video here, I'd show you a clip of the show that's on Sundays. It's called Undercover Boss. Have you all seen that? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is there anybody that doesn't know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Undercover Boss, it's an awesome show. Um, you all love it? You're, yeah. Your staff loves it too. Um, what if you actually did that on a day? You know, um, we have a new CEO, and I thought about floating this idea by him and just saying, "Hey, before too many people get to know what you look like, why don't you do this? We'll videotape it, and then we could show it to all the staff." Because you see, I think the thing about Undercover Boss, the first 55 minutes are great, 
But then, to me, I get a kick out of the very last five minutes when they show the video to everybody in the organization. And that, that individual that interacted with the boss has a lot of, gets a lot out of that video being shown. And everybody who is that person's uh, job description can all relate and then put themselves in that guy's person on that video and know that that's what they would do or that's not what they would do. Or they would have told the boss, boss off or you know, whatever they would have done. So I think that that's a, that's a great idea. If not in practice, at least in concept, bring something like that um, to your organization. You gotta show you care. Getting hands on is always nice. I wrote here, moving a bookshelf. Um, in our office recently, we're moving offices around and uh, there's this appearance that executive management is just telling the movers where to put the stuff and that, you know, here come the nice desks and they're going in and the old junky desks are going out and uh, they're ripping all the nurses' desks out and they had no input onto what the new shape of the office is going to look like. We could have had a design contest or something like that, you know, just anything. Um, and if you want to rig it even, that's fine. Whose design wins? The one that closely matched the design that you wanted. It doesn't really, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter because in the end, their design is actually the one that's being employed. And so, you know, just getting that buy-in is so important. And then if, you, if they actually saw you um, moving a bookshelf or a couch down the hall and helping the movers, uh, I don't. I just can't tell you what that would do uh, to my psyche if I saw uh, our vice president doing that. Because um, it's usually the other way around. You know, as sad as it is to be honest and say, it's usually, hey John, go move the shelf. Um, and I don't mind doing it, but um, it does. It plants seeds in your head that um, that shouldn't be there because. Uh, the worst thing that you can do is plant that seed of negativity in someone said that you didn't even mean to, it'll grow to a big bush of negativity. So you gotta watch out for that. Also getting to work early and staying late. Uh, I think a lot of people know what car the CEO drives and they see the car gone for half the day and they probably think the CEO is out on the golf course or not working or this or that. So um, getting there, staying late, um, not your days are all structured, but I'm talking about being more visible when you're there, like walking through the halls. If you get there and the first thing you do is walk through the hall, or the last thing you do is walk through the hall, it's that visible appearance of you being there and involved. I want to be one of the best broadcasters. I'm not just here to mess around. I take it serious. I want to be the best at what I do. I've got a long way to go. I want to look at some of the greats that are out there now. The important things that are highlighted, being one of the best, taking it seriously, and knowing that you're not to the promised land yet. These are all things, again, to relate back to the beginning of the presentation. Now I want you to look at the middle box and think about how or when do you bring certain elements to your team. Um, earlier we talked about walking through the halls. You can bring a purpose to your team I mean, saying hi is one thing, but if you say, you know, however you want to say it, but today is going to be a good day, or hey, how you doing, Joe? I'm going up to the board meeting. Anything you want me to tell them, I'm my way up. That's bringing a connectivity. Or uh, nurses going out to the field, hey, who are you going to see? That brings a, a personal like not only do you recognize them by name, but you want to know about what exactly it is that they're going out to do. Um, so you're bringing a purpose to that interaction. So you can even go a little bit deeper than just the, hello, how you doing? Um, just something to think about. Oh, okay, the argument, the caveats to the, using the coaching style. Um, you may choose the wrong sport to to do your model. I put the picture of golf up there because if you play a lot of golf and you think that you're going to a meeting, on your way to the meeting, say hi to everybody, recognize them by name. Or do you just put your head down and get on the elevator, get up there as fast as possible? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Just inserting 
little things throughout the day for each one of the things that you wrote on your sheet, boundaries. That's really important with the competitive nature of, uh, of sports theme coaching uh, in your organization. Um, if you start acting like a coach and you treat your nurses like team members, um, that's if you're going to model your team atmosphere on like a sport like golf. You're not an individual sport. Um, so obviously, choosing the wrong sport's a bad idea. Um, you can't confuse, co confuse coaching with managing. Managing is its own um, task that you have to do, and it's different than coaching. It really is. So my advice is to think of those things as two different things. Yeah, you are a manager. Um, you should also be a coach. You don't have to necessarily be a coach manager, okay? So you can separate those things. And you have to build bridges, not